Yeah, I, I'm Jackson. I have zero experience with carpentry. I studied at a school for historic preservation in Boston and learned about how things were built, you know, 250 years ago. There's a long way to go. I'm nowhere near the top. Not that I thought I was, but there's so much more to do out there. Welcome back again to the Passion for Craft podcast. Uh, today we're talking about the Grand Tour, something I know nothing about. These guys have been holding in very secrecy. I don't know. What is it? What's the Grand Tour? What are we talking about today? I'll give you my yeah. interpretation of it. Heck yeah. It's you just... You don't know either? Well, I know from going to his talks okay, that cool. these guys who were really interested, architects, uh, builders, would go to travel on a grand tour to uh, places that had pe- you know, buildings that were highlights that they wanted to study. Yeah. So they would basically go expand their mind mm-hmm. you know, on what's available, mm-hmm. opportunities, and then come back with this, I guess, encyclopedia of information in their mind and inspiration to execute for their clients, for their self. It basically, it's, it, to me, it sounds like an inspiration tour, like you're traveling to, yeah. with the sole intent to get inspired. Mm-hmm. So that's my... What, what, was, what were you thinking about on this episode talking about? Like, like what, was your, what was the impetus? Well, I think that people... We always talk about opportunity and we, we've seen opportunity because we're into this stuff. But I think generally that a lot of people just don't really care about craft. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons is because they haven't been exposed to it. Mm-hmm. So I think being exposed to it could be something as simple as maybe following an Instagram account that is going to feed you awesome pictures, you know, mm-hmm. of, of cool architecture and stuff like that. Uh, and I, th- and maybe even traveling, you know, Yeah. I think traveling is awesome. I would, I would love to travel. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to much at all. Yeah. You know, it's expensive to take seven people anywhere. <laughs> 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 so we kind of just, Hey, let's go drive around. Let's go to look at this neighborhood. And For it could sure. be something as simple as that. My grand tour might be driving to Dallas, you know, <laughs> I don't yeah. know, but it's, it's basically about, um, would you say that's what the Grand Tour? I mean, you know more about it than I do. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It is a it's been it's an inspiration tour. Basically, what happened historically is that you know, especially in England, as England's wealth started growing, um, you had these uh, people, wealthy people, typically who would go explore. Okay, mm-hmm. and this is you know in the when this being the you know. Uh, 1700s, uh, late 16, early 1700s, where guys would would be, you know, they had wealth, they they had time, and they would travel sometimes for business, sometimes for for things, and and what ended up happening, these tours turned into trips. I and mean, sometimes sometimes these tours were years in in the making, where they took all these staff and they spent all this time and doing this stuff. And typically, a tour was you went to France and. Uh, learned courtly manners okay you learned how to dress you learned about perfumes you learned about you know the way the french lived and they would be you know they get invitations they go to the french court and they would you know be a part of the french court and so by doing that they would they would it would be like going to you know to i don't know to new york or the met gala or something like that where you'd see crazy dresses you you expand your mind about you know uh, other things you'd be like wow you get out of your bubble yeah i didn't know people did this exactly (laughs) and so the other part of the grand tour was going down to italy and in italy they were examining the ruins of the Greek and the Roman society, and so um, there is they would they would go to look at the ruins. And so if you look at there's an artist named Piranesi, yeah, um, and he would do these uh, prints, and and the he did one of the Forum, he did one of the of the of the uh, Colosseum, and you can see as you look at this one here that that old uh, temple be, uh, temple front behind, okay, behind that lower building. And essentially what happens is if you imagine Rome, you know, the greatest, you know, civilization, you know, that that still survives and you would go and see, uh, you'd be walking through there. there There's a place called the Campo Verde. Okay. Which means cow field. And the cow field was basically, uh, 
in the middle of the form. So in the middle of downtown Rome, okay, from the classical era, you you, you have just ruins, okay? Mm. And people looked at Campo Verde, looked at the ruins of, 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 of Rome, and, and the, a lot of times they were just uh, taking the, the marble and burning the marble to get, make lime so that they could have, you know, the basically glue for their for their for their mortar and things like that so english gentlemen okay realizing that england's place in the world okay and it's and it's and it's and it's uh growth and it's strength and everything else um that uh they go to rome to because they want to go back to england and create uh they, they feel like they're the new rome or the new italy okay the new world power English English people do, and they want to understand and study the past. A very important person this time was Andre Palladio, who wrote his book in 1570, uh, the Four Books of Architecture, which was very important. But it, it, the Grand Tour, okay, and there's a lot there as you can see, was basically a chance to go and get inspired, as you said, and there's a chance to go look at these things and a chance to go study the the proportions and the scale. They would hire tour, tutors and they would they would go study these things sometimes for years. Thomas Jefferson, famous American, mm -hmm. he he went on a mini grand tour. There was only like three months, and so that's a very short one. But uh, anyway, that's a long. They, yeah, I know. It seems like a they, long time. Yeah, exactly uh, by our standards, and so. Mm -hmm. um, that's what a grand tour is, and and, and the I think the the point I think the point of, of this is that um, probably nothing has influenced my career, uh, my design career, my understanding of historic precedents as much as travel has, mm -hmm. and so travel is something. Now that you know, I'm going on my first trip this 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 fall to uh, Ireland, uh, which is going to be classical architecture and, and a little bit of golf, but the. Uh, um, it is my first chance. I've never been to Ireland. Actually, I was in Ireland as a kid, but this is my first time as an adult. And I, I'm going to look at architecture, look at gardens, look at, you know, and be inspired. You're hosting this, right? Uh, the, the, it's been put together by by a travel agent. But yes, I'm kind of leading the group and I'm going to have some reading material and some other things that people are going to, I mean, we're going to have a little reading thing on Palladio, right? Palladio created the you know, these proportions for this perfect room. And so, you know, people were inspired, inspired and aspired to build like that again. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. I had a buddy who went to Ireland recently <clears throat> and he went to the, the countryside. Yeah. Uh, is that kind of where y'all are headed? We're going to country houses, right? So, yeah. so there's Dublin, right? Uh -huh. and, and then, the, and then a lot of smaller towns. Yeah. And so, you know, Ireland was settled very much like America was, right? Yeah. That you yet you had it was there was a uh, entrepreneurial and business reasons, and they would send these English to Ireland to settle areas and create these country states and things mm -hmm. like that. Wool obviously was a big uh, thing, so you know, they were raising sheep and other things like that. So. Uh, I was surprised by the parallels between the United States and Ireland, but they really grow up in some respects at the same in the same way in the same time. Um, and so I'm curious to actually look at those Irish country houses and compare them, you know, a 1770s Irish country house to a American country house from 1770. What are going to be the yeah. similarities? What are going to be the differences? And that will be interesting. Should be, should be interesting. One of the things that he said stuck out to him about the trip was just everywhere he went there were just remnants or castle ruins almost uh, or like fort ruins that had been made and then just left over years um, which was just so cool because you had this green grass everywhere and then fort yeah. or like half a fort and he had a bunch of pictures of them and I was so curious to see you know what do they, what do they look like um, and he showed me them and a, a bunch of them are just brick 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 laid so well over one another and there's like no mortar at all inside of them and i was like oh that's see that, that good but that's a, that that's a good example of of a very subtle and 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 tiny takeaway that you can that you can get when you travel right that that you, you, you're like well i'm just going to see a bunch of stuff no you're 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 going to if you go with the eye towards learning, mm -hmm. right, just the way they made windows, right, what the profiles looked like, you know, how they, you know, I, I was in a, a in a, a rest uh, hotel in London, and um, they had double pane windows, or they had single pane windows, but they had two back to back 
I remember uh, Jesus uh, showing that. Uh, uh, double hung windows. So they had a double hung window like that. Mm-hmm. And then on the inside of that, another double hung window. So it's like a quadruple hung window <laughs> kind of, right? Right. It, they did that for energy efficiency and just comfort and things like that. Hmm. But it was just like, I've never seen you that before. You would have never thought of that. Who, who, never thought of that. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm talking about these little subtle things. And, and then just the, if you go to uh, Westminster Abbey um, and you see the Gothic work there, and I'm looking at that Gothic panel back there. Yeah. And, and but you see the scale and mass of that is it, just like, anyway, it's just inspiring. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm giving you examples of this inspiration. But inspiration has always, okay, travel has always been the thing that has inspired building and inspired everything else. If you if you know much about the Georgian and that early classicism and then neoclassicism, it happens because Robert Adam, an, a Scottish architect, went to Pompeii. Pompeii was a Roman town that basically, when Herculaneum basically exploded, it was a volcano exploded, the ash fell over this town and buried this Roman city for, you know, two centuries right the Pompeian king was started building his summer house trying to do that and 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 started digging up and found all these ruins and they start digging into these ruins and figured out that there was a whole city underneath here That's they, so and, crazy. and so they start digging it up Wild. and they, they find all they find this whole city underneath their feet right oh my and gosh. so you have <laughs> images like that right there that on the so right crazy. where Unbelievable. Uh, where they were looking at they were looking at they they had assumed what Roman interiors were, were like based on the exteriors. They realized they weren't anything like that. They were much more colorful. They were much more dainty. They, were, they did not have the big heavy moldings and things like that. So the neoclassical era happens because this is what they found. And so when they, when they oh, saw gosh. this and they realized the, the, the color and the, and the power of these interiors, Robert Adam on his interiors, there's one at the... Um, there's one at the the Philadelphia Museum. Uh, there's a Robert Adam tier. I mean, there's pinks and and crazy bright colors that you're just like, what in the world is going on here? But see that ceiling, right? And it's just uh, the colors and the decoration and the thing. They used to do that in the carpet. They used to do that in the walls. And and so that is wild. Pompeii really and the travel and the grand tour has inspired architects forever. And so the the takeaway that I would love guys to have is, is that, well, what, what tour are you going to take? And maybe we, we dial it down right now because as you are describing Richard, you know, that you guys never travel. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at you like, why not? Like you need, like you need to get the kids in the car and I drive know. to colonial Williamsburg and, and just let the kids go run around or let us babysit the kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you and Ashley, y'all can watch the Iron Man. Go, yeah, yeah. go, go look, <laughs> go, go to that place. And yeah. if you look at the the way they build the dormers and the moldings and the interiors and the trim and the and and stuff, you will be freaking blown away. And you will I come know. back I going. Go. You will come back going. Oh, Brent's always talking about that opportunity. Now I understand what he's talking about. Yeah. And so you'll see things there that you just that we don't do anymore. And so anyway, my challenge to you, Richard, not even to our listeners, to you, my friend. Get, get out there. Get out there. What are you doing? It's <laughs> July right now. Literally next month, you should go to Colonial Williamsburg. Figured out a way to do that. You're crazy if you don't. Before the kids go that. back to school, you've got to do it. Well, I, I think what that would, take, I think what that would, would be the coolest place. Not a whole lot, really. Mm-hmm. Just find, put the dogs in daycare yeah. and, and <laughs> load in the up. car. Yeah. yeah. Throw everyone in the suburban and I'm sure there's start a cool driving. stop on the way, too. Oh yeah, yeah, we could find something. The Mall sure. of America's towards that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I know. I mean, but you're right. I, you're sitting here pumping me up to go, and I want to. I, I really do want to go. I just need to stop making excuses and go. You know. I, well, I mean, you're trying to raise your game as a craftsman. You're trying to raise your game as a as a builder. I mean, it, I'm telling you that the the next you know lift that you will have is when you go look at stuff like this and you're like, Oh my gosh. Oh Mm -hmm. my gosh. What have I been doing? What have I, why was I thinking? Why did I get stuck in that rut? You know, it's powerful. How old is your oldest and how young is your youngest? I would say the oldest is 12. She's about to, she's 11, about to be 12. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect age. Yeah. Your kids. 
There's going to be five next week. I uh, five will be a little young, but you're but you're. Eight, I remember when seven, I was eight, 12, twelve going to a bunch of these places. Yeah, because I think that was when you started exploring them more. Well, I mean, when you guys, off. we went to Sturbridge Village with you guys. We went to... Uh, Colonial um, Williamsburg. Was it Colonial Williamsburg? I think it Maybe would be... Not. I mean, just to do something as a family even. Yeah. It'd be cool. Well, it was really fun with him nerding out about it. <laughs> I, we we did a bunch of the trips kind of like back to back to back on different times. I don't remember when. But um, I do remember he was nerding out about it, taking photos of everything. And uh, I was trying to set up his camera to take a burst shot, um, and I formatted his whole camera. And oh, uh, no. yeah, he lost every photo that we had just taken of. <laughs> I all think we of stopped it before before. Yeah, it, it stopped halfway, it, it, but yeah. but it, it was a good amount. It was a good amount of them. Dang. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> great, great memory. Thanks, Jackson. Um, the uh, yeah, so. You, you can look at the Grand Tour and sit there and go, oh, that's something the rich guys did before. But I'm just telling you, you, you know, go to Natchez, Mississippi, right? Natchez, Mississippi is a is a place where basically the world stopped after the Civil War, right? That is no longer growing and, you know, everything else. And you see houses like this that, that are uh, incredibly, you know, that are a little bit later than Colonial Williamsburg. So this is like... You know, eighteen hundred to eighteen fifty and sixty, but the Greek revival and the you know, you know the, what, that Persian revival and and all the different things that you're going to see there, it's it's like that's another place you need to go, right? Mm-hmm. It's just uh, and that's on the way there. And so New Orleans, I mean, New Orleans is is not a long drive. Yeah, New Orleans is worth going to. And so New Orleans was cool. I saw that recently. Yeah, I mean, it's just that's there's crazy. just there's just uh, there's places that you need to see. And before you go, like, why did they build it that way? What was going on? What was the influence? And when you realize the French influence and then you just look at that ironwork that inspired that's ironwork crazy. from the 50s or 1950s, you're like, oh, that's why ranch houses have that kind of ironwork because they were looking at the past. And they were seeing that kind of stuff. And so but you realize that it goes back to the early 1800s and in, 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 in New Orleans and it, it, it enlivens and makes it. Uh, makes it better. So you could do a grand tour of the U.S. Like totally, there's so tour. much stuff here. There's so much stuff here. There's so much. Stuff Whereas here. Jefferson, there wasn't anything here really. So yeah, he oh, was making know. it here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> making it come about here, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, Je- Jefferson famously writes in 1870 that there are no builders in in Virginia who understand classical building, and by the time he's finished with his career, about 1820. Okay, he has a whole architectural style named after him, the Jeffersonian architecture, and it is it is his stamp on you know architecture in that part of the world. When he had written forty years earlier that no one knew how to build, he couldn't get a well built house because people didn't know how to do it. It sounds like someone else I know. <laughs> yeah, Nobody I knows say. how to build. No, I'm just <laughs> no I'm I've so heard good. that out of Thomas <laughs> Brent yeah. Jefferson's mouth once or twice. Yeah. But yeah, it's they even have like historic house tours locally, right? Where yeah. you can sign up for these totally. things and just walk into houses. Yeah, if you I want, mean, it's not the as no, cool, it, but. no, it is. It's but it, but it, you are by doing that, you are because I'm suspect there's a lot of listeners who have historic houses in their neighborhoods they've never visited, mm-hmm. and so. Um, the you know the only reason I've gone to Thistle Hill and McFarland and things like that is because we work on them right. Mm-hmm. But there are there are, you know if you want to understand you know early you know Texas uh, you know you know architecture and what was going on. I mean a study of Thistle Hill right there is is a great way of understanding you know how people thought uh, in Texas about you know building and design and everything else. Mm-hmm. That was before we put the pergola up. That's interesting. Um, the, uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I suspect if we, if we wanted, right, you, you could have a little trip. I mean, certainly going to Boston, seeing the Paul Revere house, right. The, the, they have the whole freedom trail tour. Um, but also easy making it easier on you. Louisiana is really close, mm-hmm. right? You could go to New Orleans. Wait, New Orleans is Louisiana, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You can go to New Orleans. 
And then you could go Natchez up the Natchez Trail from Mississippi. You go from New Orleans right up the through Natchez, Mississippi, and then you could go anywhere to like Atlanta or like you yeah. go to that to Tennessee or to. Well, if you if you north. went to Nashville, then you could see a bunch of of you know Strickland's buildings and some Greek revival stuff, and the, and you could actually see the, a, a, a study of the of the Parthenon. The Parthenon, that's what's um, you know they they rebuilt during a Texas and uh, Tennessee Centennial uh, study. They redid the Parthenon, re- rebuilt the Parthenon because you know Athena's Nashville Tennessee. was supposed to be the Athens of Tennessee or the Athens of America. Right, and so they rebuilt a replica of the Parthenon, and so you can go check that out. Um, and then once you get on the East Coast, right, you can you, starting in Charleston and going to Savannah, Savannah, Charleston, and then up into Virginia, Colonial Williamsburg, Jamestown, then go to UVA, Monticello. But also, you've you got a, just were. you've got like a three day option. Go to Louisiana, come back. You've got like a five day option. Go to yeah. Louisiana, then Natchez, and then you've got like a ten day option. Which but like, is I, I, I don't think I'd go to New York, right? I, I don't think I if I'm trying to study, you know, historic building and things like that. New York's not as old a town as Philadelphia or Boston or Charleston, right? And those those were the kind of the three big cities during that colonial era. So. Um, Anyway, we we should make a, a tour guide for our yeah, that'd be kind of cool, that, like a yeah. like roadmap to yeah, like a fifty day roadmap. Yeah, I mean you could all, you could almost but. break it up into you know uh, week long little tours of what you're going to see and what you're going to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, do we want to do that right now? We're on the <laughs> grand tour episode. Why not throw up a United States map there and then see? Well, I think I just did. <laughs> we went to New Orleans. We went to Natchez. We went to go up to Tennessee. You cut over to, Savannah, to South Carolina, Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. Okay, and then go up to through. Uh, so you're South Carolina. Yeah. So well, you're, and then you go to Virginia. Yeah. Well, Tennessee's too high. So maybe you, if you, if you, if you, maybe you come back. You know to what Tennessee. you could do is you could go go in Louisiana, New Orleans, stay along the Gulf Coast, and then go to a seaside. Because then you're going to see a new uh, development, a new urban development, and then go north up to Savannah, into Charleston. So, so you're talking. This is from Texas. This so is from th- Texas. This is anyone can hop on the tour at any time. Correct. The tour bus is always moving. But you would go, you would go, go Louisiana, then Florida, then like because it's kind of the top of Florida, like right where yep. the trigger it's would be on the gun Destin, of Florida, right? <laughs> so, and then. You go up to Georgia and Savannah. You go to Savannah. Then correct. South Carolina. Then Charleston. They're about an hour and apart. And then, is there anything good in North Carolina? Oh yeah, I mean, Nothing. then you go All see right. the art, the arts and crafts, <laughs> and you can see like uh, the Biltmore, which is in outside of Asheville, and then the uh, the uh, what's the what's the inn in in uh, uh, the. <laughs> There's a hotel in in, in Asheville. Whoa! Um, what is that? That's, that's the cool. Biltmore. So that's a Vanderbilt estate done by uh, um, Henry Rope. Henry Henry Vanderbilt. No, is <laughs> Vanderbilt, but the is is is. is uh, Are you kidding? That's in America. Yeah, that's crazy. That is so cool. Is in North Carolina. And so, in North Carolina um, of all places. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So then there's the Grove Inn. Is it the Grove Inn in 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 uh That's in, beautiful. In Ashton? That is so cool. So that's a fabulous house to check out. And then if you go to the, uh, do you see that? I can't get over this. This to is Archie crazy. Crafts this is Hotel crazy. in yeah, there it is. Uh, is that the Grove? That's what came up. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, so that go look at the other pictures of that. Go to the front side of that thing. Eh, it's it's I've seen ar- better. It's an arts and crafts hotel, and then look at the interior on that. So thing. it's made to look like a mushroom, kind of. Um, well, those dormers are are those are fabulous, but the the interior of this this is so this is goes back to the nineteen twenties, and they Whoa. have this. Uh, anyway, there, there's amazing stuff to see in North Carolina. And then from North Carolina, I'd go up to that's a bad that, one. A Bond movie, uh, exactly. It's the villain's lair in the Bond movie. <laughs> um, and then you go, then you're into Virginia. Yeah, Virginia is just a Virginia, gold mine. Gold mine, honey one hole. One is beautiful. I, I, Virginia is almost its own trip. 
because you could start in Jamestown and uh, and then go to uh, uh, Colonial Williams, UVA, Mon- uh, Monticello, which is uh, uh, Colonial Williamsburg, DC. Colonial Williams, DC, yeah. And there's a bunch of historic stuff along the way. Go to Baltimore, Baltimore, and then also go to Annapolis. You do Baltimore, then Annapolis after Virginia? Yeah, okay. because there's some great historic stuff there. In Pennsylvania, you're obviously right in Delaware, you're going to Winter Tour. Um, but you go up you into. You got it. You got to do so Winter Tour. Crazy. You got to go up so to. so much like focus lasered in right yeah. there. Yeah. Well, that's you the hub, right? Philadelphia. You got to Philadelphia. You see the Philadelphia Museum. Tons of great stuff there. Tons of great I stuff feel like in Philadelphia. I would f- for that, I Watch feel like I would want to fly there and yeah. just get a rental car and yeah. just travel be, about. That's a lot of driving. That's a lot of With the kids like, yeah. in the back. It's like, that's, yeah. that's a. Yeah, we're in the, the 50, kids we're in the 50 day trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, um, this is the 50 day trip at this point. I mean, it, from there, I think I would go into. Uh, I mean, Connecticut, you have the Mark Twain house in, in Hartford, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, it would almost be cool to do it like a YouTube series. Like, I'm going to go on this grand tour of the U.S. Because that way I could also write it off as a business you expense. You could. You know? Totally. Absolutely. Like, All my travel is a business expense. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but then you're going into Boston. Um, you know the the that house is beautiful and, as well. Is, what is, what is this place? That's that Mark Twain's crazy. house. That's his home. Well, I mean, he's not living anymore. <laughs> it was his home. Are we sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not. What you happened know. to him? <laughs> Something bad go down there? Old age. Um, <laughs> yeah, arthritis. Yeah. So uh, he too moved much. to Plano actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, right? So, you know, de- then depending on what you want to see, like, like I've always wanted to see what the Cape is, right? What's the Cape like? Get dry out on the Cape, right? This, so there's, there's fun things to, to see and do. And, and then in, in, there's uh, in Brimfield, Mass., there, there's a great, you know, uh, where you'll go to find a tool hey, when you go to uh, North Bennett Street. You go yep. out to Brimfield and you'll find some antique tools, which Good. will be the first tools that you restore. And By get the Haba? Again. Yeah. No, Brimfield. Oh, what is out it? Brimfield. No. Brimfield. Brimfield is in Western Mass. Okay, mm-hmm. and so it's it's basically a it's a it's a farmers market. Yeah, it's a flea market. Flea market. But it's the but it's huge. You'll find a bunch of great tools there. Um, I mean, there's just so much to see. I don't even know where to stop. There's there's a place called Historic <laughs> Richmond Town. Whoa. There's a place called Strawberry Bank. There's a place called you know Sturbridge Village, which are historic <laughs> historic villages and historic things that where they where they collect historic houses. If you go right Austin's near Brim, hands are on fire. They're just to, smoking. If you as go to Brimfield, type. then right next door it is Sturbridge Village, Sturbridge Village, S T U R Bridge. Um, and this was where we went and at North Brennan Street and did some consulting and stuff. But they have a working sawmill, okay? That was a pit sawmill that you can actually see the uh, how they cut wood in you know 1720. And it was basically all water power, and this and this oh, sawmill yeah. would go up and down, and then ratchet that log forward. And you know, we had sawmills, and we had more sawmills in America than they had in London, okay, or they had in, Europe, in England because we were. Dang. Anyway, it's, that is crazy. It's it's crazy. Um, if you want to, you know, learn and, and figure out how to how things how we, things used to be built, um, going to places like that is. Uh, powerful i feel like it would be helpful f- for you to like like that was a lot of information uh, maybe like Distill highlights it into an like just put like a like a, a sheet like highlights of well, places we, we just started this thing on my on the build show um doing the master builders grand tour really yeah That's crazy. so we just did the third one yeah well third one comes out this next week and um it, it does Colonial Williamsburg, nice. UVA, Monticello, and then Winter Tour. And so we just need to sp- spread it out and keep keep going. That would be mm-hmm. an excellent resource for someone like me who's only been – I had never even been to the East and Coast. And what I say in each one is like when you're there, look at these five things. That's exactly what I want. Yeah. 
Because you could get there and just be like right. lost. Like, right. well, well, also, like everything is good there. Okay, so <laughs> so that's America, right? And so yeah. that that's staying on the West Coast, and that you know East you've Coast. got fall. Yeah, sorry, East Coast. You've got falling water, right? If you ever wanted to see a Franklin Frank Wright, Wright. famous house, that's outside of Pittsburgh. And so there are other things that aren't just colonial America, early early stuff that that you you could you could include in the in these trips. I mean. You could almost go state by state and just, you know, start checking them off that way. What about Virginia would take extra long? Yeah. You'd need like a separate mini map of Virginia to check off all the things there. And so what wait, what about other countries? Is there can you do a similar you kind of thing? You go to tour? Drayton Hall when you're in South Carolina. Um, we should put together yeah, a list. So, so, so then, right, if you if you wanted to go out west coast, then then and there's Drayton Hall in South Carolina, right outside oh, of Charleston. Cool. So if you if you uh you know, then if you wanted to go out west, right, mm -hmm. then then you're looking at a different, you know, obviously the West, eight, uh, you're looking at Victorians, right? Ranch style. Y you're not looking at colonial revival architect or colonial architecture in San Francisco. Um, you're looking at Victorian architecture and things like that. So it, depending on where you go in the country, you're, you're altering your, your stuff. Now, if you go to Europe, all right, I would start in England and you could spend... In England? London. London, not uh, France, not. No, I'd go. I'd start. I, I think our architecture is more influenced by English architecture than by French architecture. This is if you're an American, you should check out English first. Yes, I, and I would go to the Cotswolds, okay. okay, which is a you know little quaint farming village. Oh, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, you you drive through the Cotswolds <laughs> and you just see that village so after village cool. after village of this. Now, what do you learn from the Cotswolds? The scale, okay? Look at the scale of the windows, look at the pitch of the roof, look at the look at the look at that tile work. Look at that stonework and look how that the 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 lines of the stonework don't line up, right? That 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 you'll learn about building a cottage okay as opposed yeah. to building a mansion or, or mm -hmm. a thing you're, you're building a cottage and so you, you know you could spend a lot of time in london and in, in, in england just going to country houses going to villages i think this is to, my favorite architectural style that is really nice. well it, it's really charming and it's it, my and, favorite and, and so why do why do we like it right it, it's it is uh, it's it's haphazard. Not, it's not together. symmetrical. Yeah, this is right? crazy. But the scale's still really wonderful. The materiality, okay, they're just the materials and the, the materials that they're using are uh, evocative, right? They're they're they're, they're fun. Yeah, and so it feels um, organic. Yeah, it does. And so you know, then then just the way the 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 the, the roads ride, wind through there, and 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 the and the, the the ponds and the and the creeks and the little brab babbling brooks and things like okay. that. Colorized versus non-colorized is throwing me for a loop. Like you go, go to that first image, Austin, if you don't mind. The, the, I mean, charming, idyllic countryside. You're riding your bike around everywhere, going to the local bakery, grabbing a loaf of bread. You go to the next photo. You're in the middle of World War II. <laughs> there is a bomb strike that might be coming to your town tomorrow. That's and funny. you got to like watch out. But then you go to the next photo. Because and they didn't have color in, in World War II. It's, yeah, I know. Yeah. They invented it later. Yeah. But yeah. Nobody saw in color until after <laughs> Exactly. <they invented>. Right. <laughs> but I mean, if you look at that, look at that house on the left. Okay. When pigmentation oh, that, came in. That looks like the Dementors. Sorry to do a movie. Uh, uh, Ari Poa. Looks like the, the Dementors with their hoods and stuff coming out. Right. It, or it looks like a hover hole. Yeah, and so like the, the, you know you, you've got a thatch roof there, you've got a clay tile roof there on the right, oh. and so the the there is just so much to learn here. And so, what do you bring back from that? Well, of if, depression. I, if, if, so, if I'm I'm like, oh, if this so, place sucks. No. If I'm, if <laughs> no, I'm, I'm building kidding. an English cottage for for a, for a client. I'm asking questions like, well, what kind of English cottage? Yeah. You know, is it the one on the right or the one on the left, mm -hmm. right? How much timbering's in it versus stone? What are the size of the windows? Look how the dormers, you know, that the two dormers on the roof and their scale compared to the rest of the house. And look at the one that busts through that that roof yeah, line on the right. Beautiful. It's beautiful. So it's you're just so cool. <laughs> so so the the scale and the pieces of those things, you start your eye starts learning, and if you take a sketchbook and you sketch that, your eye is going to catch that and pick that up much better. I feel like whenever you, Jackson, do you have a question? <laughs> Sorry, Richard was going. I'll just I'll stay here. Yeah. I feel like when you go on a grand tour or a tourist visit places, 
for something you like, you're going to come back and have like something to compare to because you're going to be, you know, someone's going to show you something and you're going to say, that's not what I saw over there. Well, and, and mm. what, and, and totally. Jackson, do you have a question? Yeah, what's the name of this style? Just so I can, this is my favorite architecture. Well, you, you, how, you, how do you, you lock could, it in? You could say, I like the Cotswolds. Okay. Now, what, what I would say if a customer, so the Cotswolds is an that's English my, cottage style. English cottage style. Okay. So, so what, but like, would, people know what i'm talking about so yeah i was like I absolutely like, I like english car style yeah and so cool. but, but here but here's as a master builder piece that that you need to have you need to be able to the client says i really really love the cotswolds me too yeah. right and so tell me what you liked about it okay for one there's a caramel colored limestone okay? yeah that's really important so maybe getting the limestone color is really important maybe getting the roof what is the, what is the most important attributes of that house mm -hmm. right is it the roof mm -hmm. is it the stone is it the window scale right yeah. you're working yes. on those pieces yeah and so uh it's almost like the windows are recessed too and i like that yes like there is a depth in historic yeah. architecture now it's why cool. is that Rain. Why is that? Because Rain. new windows are flanged right on. Why are those windows set back? Rain. They don't want rain yes. to rot it out. Why else? Oh, I don't know. They're oftentimes steel casements, so there's a rain isn't as big a problem. Why are those windows set back? Hmm. You don't want to lose heat through them. It has nothing to do with the windows. Okay. Oh, the the oh so the structural wall. support yeah. the walls are built with solid masonry they, they, this is not an era this is not a time where two by you, six. yeah you get a two <laughs> by four and then you skinned it with a with the veneer of stone <laughs> so when you have a solid masonry wall like that it's automatically 12 to 18 inches thick and it's the reason those windows are set back oh. like that so picking that up you go Hey, I really want to, as you're building the house, we really want a deep inset window. How are we going to accomplish that? How are we going to do that? And so, one, if you think about it practically, if I'm putting my, if the outside of the house is here and I'm putting my windows here, how is the sill going to work? What is this material going to be yeah. in order to make sure that I don't have water getting into my framed wall, right? And so, you already, that, tr trying to solve that problem mm -hmm. right there is a master builder trying to solve and build better yeah right it is like looking at thinking about water intrusion thinking about you know construction methods thinking about structurally how i'm going to do that you know creatively how i'm going to make that work and so those are the things that you're doing now that we're the discussion we're having because of travel yeah. that you guys are looking at going yeah i really do need to think differently about how i build that mm -hmm. and that's the beauty awesome stuff about travel yeah while you were saying that something else came to my mind if you have the window set because i'm you know you have the big you know yeah. thick wall you can so say here window, or here yeah and you're saying you like it because it's set back more towards the interior yeah. well with that extra space you've almost created like a natural an overhang for that window to protect it a little bit more. totally mm -hmm. instead of it just being on this 100 percent house yeah like, and that, that's what i was thinking like you've got this much room of play yeah right you can if this is the front of the house you can either set the window really close to the front or further back mm -hmm. you know what which I mean? you, and would you would want to set go back. it forward because i don't know if you want a little reading nook to sit in the window and so yeah i i um but you but you would here, want it further and back. We, yeah we realize that we've only i started talking about england we've only we're still in the cotswolds right <laughs> we, we, there's we, more yeah, oh. I mean there, there's there's George's house, Georgian houses in there, which which totally reflect re reflect the early American Georgian houses that we're building. You go to Robert Adams stuff, and you look, you you go to the Victorian Albert Museum, and you actually see these different rooms, and you know there's. There's the Tudor Jacobean stuff, right? Which is the linen fold panels and things like that, which has not really to do with the Cotswolds. Jacobean, Jacobean. I don't know. I don't know. And so, <laughs> um, so there's there's the Tudor stuff with like this paneled wall. That's a Tudor wall, right? That's a Tudor interior paneled wall. They did mason miters and things like that. And then you have. Um, like like this right <laughs> so, like crazy. This so this is also english and so when your cl client says to you well english well what about what are you talking georgian english are you talking tudor english you're talking like one door cotswolds door. you're talking you know uh just got that <laughs> um 
And so realize the depth and for the smart people. breadth. And I talked, I talked in another episode about playing from a playbook of one or two pages versus a thousand, mm-hmm. right? This is a perfect example. This is like page 900 and that you, yeah. that you're <laughs> looking at, right? That you're, that you're like, I, they're so yeah. rich here. And the, the, it's no. crazy. Cause one guy making this room spends his whole life making this room oh he spins in terms of hand carving year, which year, that is all yeah, hand carved a year right? years probably it's it's a year or two so a year or two that's it yeah one guy well yeah. whenever okay. it's it's funny because you like when i first got my house you know i had you out we shot that video and i was like what style of house is this you're like yeah it's like an english cottage and i can see it now like when we're looking oh, at those cool those pictures you know it's like that you know sloped roof even the color of the brick you know yeah which i'm not going to paint it anymore so decided against it the uh anyway good call we uh <laughs> it's just the grand tour right it's just you know we kind of go down a rabbit hole and but, we got but, stuck in england but we literally so this cool. is this is what happens when you travel and and you look at stuff and you go back to your own house and go this place yeah sucks. No, I, e- either <laughs> either i have a greater pre- appreciation for my house and understand the style better or you know what? If I fix these three things, this thing could really be incredible. Yeah. So here's a, this is kind of a weird question. We get a lot of our influence from like North, Western European countries, right? Mm-hmm. Right. That's like where the majority of it comes from. Right. But like Russia has like a very distinctive architectural style, right? With the spired roofs and everything. Oh, yeah. Germany has its distinctive That's one. That's the Ottoman Turk piece, yeah. Yeah. And then China and Japan have a very distinctive style. And then India has a very... So but America's way less influenced by those styles, right? Like, I feel like if someone built a home that was supposed to mimic, like, an Indian home, it would look very out of place in comparison, right? So is that, like... Is there a question? My, my question, I guess, is, like, is it a bad home, quote-unquote, if you're making a home like a in the style of something that's not english or scottish or french which we get a lot of our influences from does that make sense like i don't well, think it's bad i think the, it's just is preference the, is the question is it bad or is the question yes. is why is it bad first no it's it's all in the execution if that house you know let's Here's just say example. like that is is executed well yeah then you know everybody has the appreciation for it so I guess I'm confused to, when I ask, like, what's your ideal style of home? Like, remember when we were talking about, like, ideal home and everything, you said it depends on the neighborhood and it depends on the house and the history of that. So if I came into a new neighborhood and I'm building a new build and it's an Indian style home and you're like, oh, that doesn't fit with the neighborhood. It doesn't oh, fit you're with talking the streetscape. Well, I mean, I, I guess I'm just talking like what we build defines us. So if I want to bring that style over inherently we kind of have like these are quote unquote good styles in america and then these are quote unquote bad styles but it's not good or bad it's this fits and this is doesn't fit i guess right i mean does that make sense is that no you're not you're, weird. Being, you're 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 it seems like you're asking three different things maybe maybe i am i guess i'm just kind of trying to figure out like would it would it i i know it wouldn't fit it wouldn't make sense it look i think i see what you're thing. saying like in a period revival neighborhood right. where you have, you know, all these styles that Americans usually are thought to right. be inspired by. If you brought a Russian or like right. an Indian one in, I don't think it would fit. But It wouldn't fit, I, I but think it, it would, would it be a bad architectural move if you're just designing the house? You know I, I, mean? I guess I look at it and I go, that's risky, right? Okay. R- r- because you've, you've built a house... Um, very specific to your taste, which which aren't shared by a lot of people. Yeah, and so it's just like a lot when, of people here. It's just like when people, people build like modern it. houses yeah, in America. Moderns. Yeah, you know, modern houses don't sell as well as traditional houses. Wow, that's a funny da- stat. Hands down, and so you know there is there is uh, monetary risk and that mm-hmm. that you do that, and and no one wants to buy your house mm-hmm. because it stands out too much. It's too weird, and and you know. Let's say you grew up in, you know, Pakistan or, yeah. or, or somewhere in an eastern country yeah. and were really inspired by the architecture, brought it back and executed it really well. Mm-hmm. Well, you might 
open yourself up to another 1% of people who'd be mm-hmm. interested, but it's still a very small percent of people who are going to be interested, even if it's executed well. Yeah. So it's almost like there is not exactly like this, but to some extent, a right and a wrong architecture style that fits with the broader narrative of America. I don't know right or wrong, better and worse. Better and worse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and purely from the monetary standpoint, yeah. because if it's executed well and you love it and the, and the house works for you, then who cares? Who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess it'd be like if you flip it, the scenario and right. you're in a Pakistan and you're going mm-hmm. to build like a colonial revival. It'd well, because like, that, that's what, what I'm thinking. Right. Like, exactly. when, <laughs> like we're looking at this Tudor style home and these Kaiser style homes like, this is amazing. But then you go bring that somewhere else. Like you go bring that to China. Do they go, this is amazing? Or are know, we just purely question. influenced by our culture? That's kind of what I, where I'm getting at. Because yeah. I'm like, it's a, it's a crazy thought. Yeah, I think, I think we're all used to seeing things that we're used to seeing. Mm-hmm. I think the challenge for us with things like this is is that it's hard to look at that and go, oh, they did a great job. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if they did a great job. And that's yeah. weird. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just like. Um, we're looking at audio listeners. We're looking at a house in Georgia in Savannah. No. Natchez. <clears throat> Natchez, Mississippi. That's got like a red bubble on top. It's very Russian inspired, I think. Got like the spire and uh, very ornate. So, got like some Victorian influence. It's it's called an onion dome, I think is what it's called. An onion dome. (laughs) From Russia. (laughs) Is that your Russian voice? This is my Russian voice. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Tours. Grand tour. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed Do the it. grand Great tour. Court. Richard, are you going to Natchez PDF this weekend? coming soon. N- yes, that is the question to end the, end the thing. I'm Richard, gonna go, when are you going to Colonial Williamsburg? I'm going to go tomorrow, <laughs> and I'm going to watch all the Iron Man stuff on the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got to figure it out. Like I said, traveling with seven people yeah, is yeah. tough. But I think you really could make a two-day trip out of um, New Orleans. Or a three day trip, yeah. I guess, because it's what a five hour drive, six hour. Yeah, drive it's there? not, but yeah, it's that's crazy. about right. And no, then you get your beignets. You get is longer. Get, I think it's an eight or ten hour drive. Oh, okay. Well, well I could right. do it. You could do it. That's a day. I, I will you update know. you on, on yeah, the next yeah. on well, the next one. Be excited here. All right, talk to you guys later. Peace. <laughs>